and welcome back fifth graders let's go ahead and get this homework knocked out it said let's find the area of each trapezoid each trapezoid so first thing we're going to do is find the triangles in the trapezoid you see there's one triangle over here which means it's going to be one triangle on this side as well and we can assume that it is six centimeters since this other one is six centimeters as a base uh, now we have to figure out what is going to be uh, the base and height of each of these triangles. Well, I see that this triangle, the base is 6 and the height is 8. So this would be 6 times 8. Uh, let's see, 1 half times 6 is 3. Is that half of 6 is 3. And 3 times 8 is 24. So the triangle, each triangle, will be 24 centimeters squared. Next, we do the rectangle. I know that this is 9 centimeters, so this must be 9. But let's double check it. If this is 9, when I add 6 and 6, 12 and 9, they have 21. So this definitely has to be 9. So now we're going to have the length, which is 9, times the height, which is 8. And that's going to be 72. Now we have to find the area of the trapezoid. What are we adding together? Well, we have two triangles. They're each 24. And we have one rectangle, which is 72. Together, we got 72, 24, and 24. We add these together. 4 and 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 7 is 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is going to equal 120 centimeters squared. All right. Uh, that was number seven. That means I've got to do number nine. This is a kite. And again, we're going to bring the, break the kite up into triangles. Uh, we're going to have a triangle with a base of three and a height of 6.5. And over here, we'll have triangles with a base of three, but with a height of 4.5. So these two triangles are going to be identical. And these two triangles are going to be identical. So let's start with this pair, all right? Uh, we know this is going to be uh, triangle is one half times base times height. And so this is going to give us, uh, let's do the small ones first, a base of three. And a height of 4.5. And remember, we're multiplying all that times one half. Since there's two of them, we're also going to be multiplying our answer by two. This is kind of unique because when I multiply something by two and divide it by two, I'm basically canceling these out. So I don't need to do this or that. All right. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and take 3 times 4.5. And let's see, 3 times 4.5. 5 times 3 is 15. Here are the 1. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13. We're at one decimal place, so we'll put 13.5. So that means both of these, or the area for both of these triangles will be 13.5. All right, let's go ahead and look at this one. This time our base is 3. 
We'll use the same formula, one half times base times height. And that's going to give me one half times three times 6.5. Once again, um, we know that we're going to have two of these, so I'm going to multiply it to two. Again, the two and the one half cancel each other out. And now I have 6.5 times 3. Five times three is 15. Carry the 1. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19. And I got one decimal place, so I'll bring it there. So this will equal 19.5. Both of these together. And now to find the area, and that's what we're doing with all these to number 12, finding the area, uh, I'm going to take 19.5. And I'm going to add it to 13.5. 5 plus 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. Plus 3 is 13. And 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And adding these, right, so... Uh, I can simply go ahead and bring my decimal down. That means this whole thing is 33 centimeters squared. All right. Let's move on to number 11. Number 11 said a sidewall of a building is shown below. What is the area of the wall? Once again, just like this first one we did, we have a trapezoid, right? So we're going to make two triangles up the ends here. Um, so if this comes down, we see this is 6 feet. This is 30 feet, which means if this comes down, some of you might be saying, Mr. Mendes, how do you know this is going to be 6 feet? Well, let's look at this. Uh, this whole thing is 40 feet. <clears throat> We know we're minus six feet from this side. That gave us 34. Then we're taking 28 feet because we're coming straight down. So that's going to be minus 28. We know we can't take eight from four, so we have to borrow one. And turn this to 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. And that's how we know this will also be 6 feet. All right, now that I know the dimension or the measurements of my triangle, I know I have two triangles. Remember, the area of the wall is 1 half times base times height for the triangles. That means we're taking one half times six, because that is the base, and multiplying it to the height, which is 30. We're also going to multiply it to two, since I see that there's two triangles that are identical. Once again, if I have a half and two, one half of two is one. So I can get rid of these here. And I have 60 or 6 times 30. Well, 6 times 3 is 18. So 6 times 30 will be 108. So I know the area of these two triangles is 180. Next, I'm going to find the area of this rectangle. The rectangle is 28 by 30. 
I can take 28 and multiply it by 30. And put my zero over here and just take it as 28 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. 2 comes up. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more make 8. So this will be 840. Now, to get them together, I'm going to have to take 840 and add it to 180. Zero plus zero is zero. Four plus two is 12. And one plus one plus eight makes 10. That makes 1,020 square feet. All right, let's go to down to number 13. The area of the kite is 30 meters square. What is the value? Remember, we're just looking for x ray. So, how can I set this up? Uh, x is on either side. What I can do is realize this kite could be looked at as four triangles, but it could also be looked at as two triangles. And one triangle, each of these have a base of 10, the height of X, okay? So if the whole kite is 30 meters square, since I'm dividing it in two, I can take 30 and divide it by two. And that means that each one of these triangles is 15 meters square. Now I can use this to solve it because I have my area of the triangle. Remember, the formula for a triangle is area equals base times height. In doing this, I know the area is uh, 15, and the base is 10, 4 plus 6. Uh, and the height is x. All right. Uh, let's see here. 10, the height is x. And base times the height. Oh, and then remember, it's base times height divided by 2. So multiplied to 1 half. Let's not forget that. And so I, I kind of messed up here. It should be a one half base times height. Let's rewrite this a little better so I don't make anybody uh, second guess what I'm doing. Okay, this was equals one half base times height. And that means 15 is going to be equal to one half. because that's the base and the height is well we don't know so we're just going to put h over here well in this case x so now we got to take one half times ten and that's five so we got fifteen equals five x get x alone, we'll have to divide 5 away, which means we divide 5 from the other side. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and that means 3 equals x. So, uh, what is the value of x? x equals 3. All right, let's go and check uh, number 15. This is my last one for the night. A craftsman wants to build this symmetrical fiddle he needs to know the area of the face of the fiddle so we got this 
and he's got this. Remember, it's a symmetrical fiddle. That's a key word there. It means just, uh, it's equal on both sides, okay? Uh, if I was to split it down the half, they would be reflective of each other. So how could he use measurements shown to find the area? He used the strategy to find, uh, to find the area of the face of the fiddle. Well, here we went down, made a right angle, and that caused this height to be 326. It didn't tell us how long this was, but I do know I can do the same thing to this side. Okay. And make a right angle over here. Now the key is, I know this thing all the way across is 216, and I know this rectangle here is 77. So what I'm going to do is take 216 and minus 77 from it. Six minus seven, well I can't do that. Uh, so I'm going to have to borrow one here, then that'll be 11, I'll have to borrow one there, and then this would be a 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. 10 minus 7 is 3. And then the 1 comes down. So I know that there is 139 that's left here and here. What I need to do is divide 139 by 2 since it's symmetrical. 139 divided by 2. Uh, 2 goes into 13 6 times. We need 19. And that means that this is going to be 2 going into 19, which is going to give me uh, well 9, because 2 times 9 is 18. And that'll give me one left over, so my decimal will go here, which means I'll add another zero, and two goes into 10 five times. So this is 59.5, 69.5. So I know that each one of these bases here and here is 69.5. All right, now I know the height and the base of my triangles, and I know my height and my base of my rectangle. Let's go ahead and do this. First, the formula for it, uh, triangle is area equals one half times base times height. So this is going to be 69.5 for my base. then my height will be 326. I know there are two triangles that I'm trying to find, so I'm going to take my answer and multiply it by 2 so I can find the area of both of them at once. I remember that 2 times 1 half, well, that's like 2 divided by 2, and that's 1, so I'll cross these two out. That leaves me with 69.5 times 326. I'm going to use my calculator here. 69.5 times 326 is equal to 22,657. 22,657.
That gives me, uh, remember this is all millimeters, millimeters square. Oops, sorry, I gotta put two M's. All right, and now I have to find the rectangle. The rectangle is 77 by 326. So remember the area of a rectangle is simply base times height. There's only one rectangle here, so you just have to take 77 and multiply it by 326. Seventy-seven times three hundred and twenty-six is equal to twenty-five thousand one hundred two. Now we have to add the two sums together. I'm going to take my 25,102 and bring it underneath my 22,657. I'm going to add these two together. 7 plus 2 is 9. 5 plus 0 is 5. 6 plus 1 is 7. 2 plus 5 is 7, and 2 plus 2 is 4. So I should get 47,759 millimeters squared. All right, that's all of them that I had to do, so I'm guessing the rest is going to be up to you. Have a great night, and I'll see you in class.